cranial nerves 3, 4 and 6, the oculomotor, trochlea and abducent. These three cranial nerves are tested together since they share a common function, that is movement of the eyes. For the purposes of this presentation, we will not distinguish between different lesions of these three cranial nerves. Their nuclei are found in the midbrain and pons areas. The trochlear nerve supplies the superior oblique muscle and the abducent nerve the lateral rectus muscle. The third cranial nerve supplies the medial rectus, inferior rectus, superior rectus and inferior oblique muscles. It also performs two other functions. Innervation of the levator palpebri superioris, that is the upper eyelids, and constriction of the pupils through parasympathetic components. Begin with observation. Note the level of the eyelids. Is there any evidence of ptosis, that is droopiness of the eyelids? Observe the symmetry and the position of the eyes. Strabismus or squint may become more evident when the affected eye is moved towards the direction of the affected muscle. The patient may be tilting the head to one side in a long-term attempt to compensate. Test for strabismus and diplopia. Ask the patient to follow your finger whilst you slowly move it in front of their eyes, drawing the capital H letter. Make certain that they do not move their head, just their eyes. Ensure that the range of movement is within the physiological boundaries of comfortable vision. Taking your finger too far laterally or moving it too fast will produce inaccurate findings. Before you start, ask the patient to let you know if at any stage of the test they see double. Now, can I get you to follow the tip of my pen and if at any stage you experience double vision, let me know. Okay, try and follow it with your eyes. Observe for any evidence of strabismus or nystagmus. And how was that? Did you have any double vision? No. no. If double vision is experienced, then ascertain its origin. Does it involve a particular muscle or nerve or a combination? Refer to the tables in the slideshow for a full analysis of these lesions. Now test for accommodation and convergence. Hold an object about a foot away from the patient's nose and slowly bring it closer with the patient fixing on it. You should be able to observe the pupils constricting in order to allow the patient's vision to remain in focus whilst the eyes converge medially. Lesions of the oculomotor nerve may be seen in diabetes, with pituitary tumours and in vascular diseases. Isolated lesions of the trochlea and abducent nerves, although uncommon, may sometimes be seen in diabetes, head trauma and as a result of raised intracranial pressure. The third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves can all be affected by cavernous sinus syndromes such as tumours and carotid artery aneurysms. When assessing the eyes, check for evidence of Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome develops as a result of paralysis or compression of the sympathetic nerves which arise from the cervical spine via the T1 nerve root. These nerves supply the face and pupil, causing partial ptosis of the upper eyelid, an ophthalmos or sunken eye, anhydrosis or dry face, and meiosis or small pupils.